But, oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, I was driving down the road and I saw this turtle over here. Uh, we'll see if uh, she's nesting or if she's just kind of walking. But right here along the side of a busy road. It's like a slider. Yep, she's making a nest, it looks like. Pretty girl too. Uh, urinated on it to make the ground moist because we haven't had rain in you know, days. So she's urinated on the nest to make the ground nice and soft. She may be depositing eggs in there, it's hard to see. But I'm gonna kind of leave her alone. But looks like it is a show of her face. So this is a uh, Cumberland slider. And these guys come down the Cumberland pr Plateau into all these little creeks and streams. Uh, really pretty sliders as far as sliders go. They're a little bit in between, you know, what you would see in a yellow-bellied slider and a red-eared slider. So likely somewhere back in the woods behind her, somewhere back in there is probably a, a nice clear flowing creek. That's what they like to live in. So pretty cool. I'm gonna let her uh, continue to lay her eggs and I'm gonna keep driving down the road. All right, so right now there's just a huge abundance of these little river cooters swimming around. Uh, these guys have, this one probably hatched out uh, inside the nest in the fall or early winter and then overwintered in the nest and then came out uh, on a warm day this spring and then has been running around uh, basically getting started on being a little turtle. So it's pretty neat to see these guys. I mean, this is one of several that I saw. I just was able to kind of grab this one before it took off in the middle of the creek, but beautiful turtles with an intricate pattern. And, uh, cool. So I'm gonna shoot some photos of this guy and then let him go. All right, next baby turtle is this little baby Cumberland slider. This guy's, again, another probably hatched in the uh, fall inside the nest and then got started. Woo, sorry. This guy probably got started uh, earlier this spring, so uh, you can always identify the Cumberlands by having that stripe behind the eye. Thick stripe behind the eye and then thick stripe below the eye uh, separates them from the yellow bellies and the red ears. And those two other species don't also range naturally here, so uh, if you're in a, a pretty unmolested or unencumbered creek, you're going to find the Cumberland slider. Really pretty for a slider. And they like these little kind of side sloughs off of the main channel of the creek. I don't know what it is lately, but I have good luck with finding common snappers. Got a common snapper right here in front of me, making its way up the creek. See if I can get a hold of it. Oh yeah, you're unhappy. All right, let me get a grip on it that's not the tail. I use, I use the tail just to get a hold of them, make sure they don't get away. And then I usually switch to grabbing the clastron. There we go. And now I have a good grip on this turtle. This doesn't hurt them in any way. Uh, it's actually supportive, uh, but they still will want to bite you like this one's trying to do. Look at that face. Nice common snapping turtle. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna shoot some pictures and let this go. I've, I've caught plenty of these. There you go, you can go downstream. There you go. Yeah, not trying to bother with me. Yep, just gonna cruise across this clear creek back in that direction. And I may pass this turtle again when I come back downstream, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. I just keep running into common snapping turtles. So they're really active right now.
Got a striped neck musk turtle on this muddy bottom. It's actually trying to dig in right now, so I'm gonna reach in and grab it. Gotcha. Yep. Striped neck musk. Let's see if I can get out of the water. All right, typically I don't really find striped neck musk turtles in uh, kind of muddy slough, uh, soft bottom habitats. And it seems like this one has uh, kind of specialized in hanging out here because it looks a little different than the ones that are in the creek just on the other side of these trees. Uh, it has a smaller head. It hasn't developed the massive jaws and massive head for eating the snails. Uh, it looks like it's adapted to eating other things in this area. Um, and you can see it's actually an older turtle. So uh, she's adapted herself more to like a, like being like a stink pot. So she's got a little bit of an identity crisis. So we'll let her go back to her habitat. There you go, friend. And there she goes. She's gonna disappear into the mud. All right, right here is a beautiful water snake. It's like a nice midland, but it's got this beautiful orange color. Just sitting here basking on the bank. I'm not gonna bother it. I'm just gonna let it sit there and bask. But, oh, here he goes. Right past my feet. <laughs> All right, buddy. Now he's going up this log now. There he goes. Really pretty snake. All right, so right here I have a buried spiny softshell turtle. I'm gonna try and pull some of the sand back to show some of the pattern on the back of the shell. And it's hard to find these guys. You have to look for uh, the sand to be pushed out of the way. But right here, you can start to see a little bit of the pattern on the back. You can see these little spots. So if I keep brushing this back, keep pushing the sand back, you start to see this turtle start to kind of appear out of the sand. And we'll let the water clear. And you can kind of see, let's see if I can push this. Oh, there he is, right there. It's like a juvenile female spiny softshell was hiding out in the sand. So I uh, had been hoping to find one of these and be able to show you that and the way that they hide in the sand. And uh, I got really lucky and was able to do that. So pretty cool. And now I'm just gonna let this turtle go and watch how fast they disappear. Boom, buried itself in the sand. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And it just goes to show like how well they can hide and how fast uh, they can just disappear. They're really something else. Uh, the softshell turtles are really some of the coolest turtles that we have. I mean, there's not too many that can just, you know, bury themselves like a stingray. I mean, there are turtles that'll bury themselves, but I mean, you saw that. That was all of two seconds and that turtle's completely covered. All right, right here looks like another spiny softshell uh, buried in the sand. You can kind of see the lump that it makes. And then right here would be the head. And yeah, this is, uh, this is what they do. So let's reach in here and see if we can get this turtle. Yep, there it is. Back edge of the shell. And got it. Looks like a, uh, yeah, this is a, this is a male. And you can see he's very brilliantly colored. The males are absolutely beautiful. Uh, they have that super clean uh, spotted pattern, uh, nice bright colors on the front head and legs, and just really unique and beautiful turtles. Pretty cool. All right, so we'll let this guy go. I'm gonna actually let him go over here so we can watch him bury himself in the sand. There he goes. And just like that, you can kind of see he just kind of makes a little mound right here can kind of see him uh, getting in there. And then you would just never know that turtle is there. All right, here's a predated nest. Uh, these look like little ping pong ball shaped eggs. So I'm guessing at this size and how small they are. Uh, these are probably soft shell eggs. Um, and it looks like the soft shell just, you know, with, with a nest this size, I'm thinking it may be this turtle's first time nesting. Um, and it just chose way too close to the water and way too open. And the eggs were just easily, you know, predated upon. And it's, you know, when, when they're out in the open like this, I mean, every animal out here is looking to eat these. So, you know, 
most turtles, you know, the deck is, is stacked against them. And this is what happens. So uh, there's going to be plenty more nests. Uh, there's probably some further up into the uh, brush there. And they're going to hatch on their own and do fine. Little musk turtle right here. Take a look at this little guy. Little loggerhead musk. Pretty neat. Got like kind of a cool pattern on him. All right, gonna take some pictures and let him go. I looked over and I found the second one. So that's two juvenile male loggerhead musk turtles. Pretty cool. They're all just hanging out here, feeding on uh, stuff between these rocks. So I'm gonna let them both go. There you go, guys. Be safe. <laughs> I'm gonna just take off along the bottom right there. All right, can you spot the turtle? Can you see it? Can you see him right? Boop, right there, that little green thing. It's a little loggerhead musk. Let's pick him up. What a cool looking little guy. He was just down there foraging. So I'm gonna let him go. But neat little area, he's got this like down tree to hang out in, so. Uh, looking right now for alligator snappers. Haven't seen anything yet, but uh, did find a loggerhead musk, so turtles are out. Yeah, buddy. All right, so in this drainage, this is what I look for. This is alligator snapping turtle scat. And when these guys eat corbicula clams and mussels and small turtles, uh, when they defecate, it all comes out as a mass of shells. Let me see if I can get an underwater shot. out is this big mass of just crushed up shells and so this is what that happens when they consume all this stuff and uh, that you can see what they eat in in this particular stream they're eating these invasive Asian clams all right just caught this common musk turtle uh, these guys are relatives of the loggerheads they're all part of the musk turtle group uh, this is a good sized female uh, and I'm gonna let her go so we'll let her go back uh, in this little log area that I found her in. <laughs> Alright, just released that common musk, aka stink pot, and I believe I see another musk turtle right here. This is a, uh, it's a little loggerhead. Yep, little male loggerhead musk. Look at that, marginals bitten off by a larger musk turtle. So that's how you know there's a good population. We're gonna let it go. Big old male loggerhead musk turtle. You can tell he's a male because he has that large fat tail. Uh, females have little dainty tails. And you can tell he's a loggerhead musk turtle. Whoa, <laughs> that was crazy. You can tell he's a loggerhead musk uh, by the enlarged head, the pattern on the skin, shape of the shell. Uh, and these guys tendency to live in these flowing habitats. So let's let him go. See you later, bud. Yes, quite the escape. All right, right here is a uh, plain-bellied water snake. These guys are really cool. They're super fast for a water snake. Kind of almost reminds me of like a racer. And they'll actually come pretty far up, out away from the water to hang out. This one was up on the trail and kind of zoomed down towards the water. Now he's moving along the edge. Pretty cool. All right, so I've been walking this beautiful floodplain, uh, kind of wading around, seeing if I see anything. And over here is a beaver dam, and on the other side, it's pulled up a, a good bit, and I can see some cooters basking. So I'll go there in a minute. I do want to explore some of this because I do see some interesting looking marks and trails through the water. Uh, a lot of stuff that would be worth looking into. So, let's see what I get. All right, just walked up on a really cool turtle right here. Right there, Eastern Painted Turtle. Looks like it's moving around in this kind of mucky stuff. So, we'll see how much I sink trying to get a hold of it. 
Yep, there we go. I'm sinking already. Get a hold of this gal. It's a pretty good sized female eastern painted turtle and she's really heavily stained. Uh, that's really common here. Uh, our, our soil has a lot of iron in it. That's why the clay is like a red color uh, most of the time. And uh, it just has a, an effect of making what should be a yellow plastron, you know, this darkish, you know, maroon or red color. So pretty cool. That's a good sized Eastern painted turtle. I'm gonna have to get some photos of this one and uh, then we'll do a release. All right, so I already grabbed some shots of her. So I'm gonna set her down and we'll let her take off back into her uh, little floodplain creek. She's like really scared and nervous. <laughs> Go for it. There you go. Next time, do a better job of hiding. That is not it. So cool to see them, though. Uh, and and usually this is where, if I'm in like anything like a stream or part of a river system, and I do come across painted turtles, it's usually in this type of scenario. So like a floodplain, or there will be a section that's, you know, maybe been. Um, dammed by beavers and you know turned into like a big pond type area so as you can see she's trying to find a good place to hide i think she'll do a lot better once she makes it to the log jam pretty cool i think that's the first wild eastern painted turtle uh, i've got on one of these herping videos so i'm pretty stoked about that all right so following that painted turtle uh, now we're down in this little narrow log strewn creek Let's see what else we can find in here Hopefully something. Uh, usually when they're narrow like this, they're usually not very productive. So, also really hard to walk in. I don't know if you can hear me straining just to take a step, but all of this stuff sinks down pretty far. It's definitely not solid ground. But the neat thing is there's mussels in here. You can see there's little clams and stuff. So it's actually a pretty good little stream. A lot of stuff can survive off of that. And I sank up to my knee. All right, I just captured a huge common snapping turtle. This ancient guy was making his way up the creek. As you can see, this is a big, big turtle. Ugh. And he is a handful. I've been trying to wrestle this guy for about 10 minutes before I got the camera out because there's just no solid footing here and no way to get good shots by myself. So I've been doing what I can, but as you can see, that is a big, big common snapper. Uh, he's probably every bit of 30 or 40 pounds. So truly a monster. That is a really impressive common snapping turtle. So I'm gonna try and get some photos of him and then uh, we'll film a release. But look at the size of this thing. Look at that, look at that head. Sorry if my filming is terrible. I'm trying to do this with one hand. That is a huge turtle. And he wants to, <laughs> he is very happy to defend himself. You can see he's missing some claws on that foot, probably in an exchange between him and another snapping turtle. But just a overall very large turtle. I mean, I've caught a lot of these. This is one of the bigger ones I've caught in Georgia. And you can see he's old, very, very old. All right, I got some photos. Here's the release. Just gonna let him kind of crawl back into here. I gotta say, when I was walking through here and I saw this turtle, my heart stopped for a second. I thought I was looking at a really old female alligator snapper because he's about the size of an adult female. That's probably about an 18 inch shell. So for a common snapping turtle, that's really big. That's on the really the upper end of of what they get you can see he's just going to go up into his log jam where he naturally lives so pretty cool man <laughs> i've caught a lot of big big snapping turtles but for some reason that common snapper wore me out more than like a hundred pound alligator snapping turtle i mean that was you know, like I said, maybe a 25, 30 pound turtle, but that was a fight every step of the way. I'm like sinking in mud and sand and tripping over rocks and logs. So, uh, that was cool. That was, 
that'll make my day. That'll make today awesome. Uh, just catching that and um, just really stoked every time I get to see really big commons because you don't really get to see the huge ones that often. So, uh, man, that made my day. Got a large female soft shell right here. I'm gonna try and get in close to her, but she's probably gonna move off. Yeah, there she goes. But beautiful female spiny soft shell. Moving off into the night. Got a nice little cotton mouth on the bank over here. He's in an ambush position, just kind of waiting for something to come by. And just chilling, so I'm not gonna bother him too much. I don't wanna disturb him hunting. But it always is cool to see a uh, cottonmouth, especially one just sitting there waiting for, for prey to go by. So I'm gonna turn around and head back and go to the next spot. All right, I'm out here. I'm in the creek at night. and uh, hoping for some big turtles. So wish me luck. I'm probably gonna have to put my phone away to do this because I'm gonna get really wet. So I'll check back in if I get anything. All right, right here, what I look for every time I come out, alligator snapping turtle. Uh, this guy's just chilling up here next to the bank, not really doing much. Um, just awesome to see this guy just walk right up on him and see him just sitting here, <laughs> kind of half hidden. So uh, I'm gonna get some pictures of him. Beautiful alligator snapping turtle. Look at that. Beautiful turtle. Uh, what I like about these guys and uh, one of the things that makes them so special here is these guys just have huge bulky heads uh, because they eat a lot of mollusks and you can see just the skull is just so built up and just so much muscular back musculature back here and just the bone is thicker and they got these plates in the bottom jaw you can see those plates in the bottom jaw there they fit up against plates in the upper jaw and those are for consuming mollusks and crushing them up and then the ones here have super marginals, but they're basically barely there. So that's another way to tell the ones from this drainage is uh, they don't really have well-developed super marginals like other alligator snapping turtles.
I tell you what, uh, the longer I, I actually got a chance to look at this turtle, uh, the smaller tail and the overall build of this turtle actually tells me this is most likely a female. Um, as a male would have like a much thicker tail, uh, the shell kind of has an overall different shape with the males. Uh, males tend to have a more kind of tapered snout, whereas this one has kind of a shorter, blunter face and snout. So most likely this one is a female. I'm kind of by myself, so it's hard to get a really good examination of this turtle um, by myself out here. So I was getting uh, just a few more shots of her, and then we're gonna let her go. And uh, wow, I, again, this is what I come out here for. These these are my favorite turtles. They're really, you know, kind of my favorite animal on the planet, and uh, it just makes me so happy to be able to come out here and see them in the wild. Uh, it just it, there's there's nothing that really touches it. Nothing comes close. All right, yeah, just to confirm that this is a female, I uh, palpated the area underneath her legs and uh, this, this turtle is actually full of eggs. So I don't want to cause her any more stress. I'm going to get her back to the water uh, so that she can lay those eggs in the next few days. So um, yeah, this is, this is really incredible uh, to find a gravid female alligator snapping turtle is, is really something special. So I don't want to bother her anymore, so I'm going to let her go. All right, so here we go, releasing this female back into the creek. Like I said, I hope she just, you know, goes on to, to lay those eggs. Uh, these, these females, they're the most important turtles in the ecosystem. You know, they're the... A lot of times, they seem to be some of the oldest ones in these creeks. I've seen some really old females in here. And, um, you know, it's their job to kind of reseed know their species and uh, one thing that's neat about these guys is they can retain sperm so she can mate with you know a male five six years ago and still have sperm to fertilize you know her eggs and she can also mate with multiple males and retain all that sperm and then have genetic diversity within that clutch of eggs so again just incredible turtles um, I'm beyond stoked to have found her here tonight it just it worked out it worked out great I couldn't be happier. Um, I can go home and get a good night's rest and, you know, I, I can rest easy knowing that, you know, she's out here, you know, producing more baby turtles and uh, there's going to be plenty of alligator snappers here for years to come. So she's going to figure out her way back. Uh, she's a little bit downstream of where I caught her, but um, she's going to figure it out. She's. I think right now, I, I, after being handled and photographed and everything, she's probably just gonna try and find a place to sit safe. Um, so I'm gonna take this light off of her. I'm gonna go home and, man, just what a great night. I'm super stoked. What a, sorry, I keep getting bugs in my mouth while I'm talking. <laughs> I'm so excited, but I keep getting bugs in my mouth. But yeah, just, I'm super excited, super stoked. Um, just such a beautiful turtle too. I mean, you know, a lot of brown, but there's a lot of like peachy colors and kind of light yellow colors and stuff in the jaws and in some of the parts of the face and just really awesome. So happy World Turtle Day to everybody and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, so tomorrow, tomorrow is World Turtle Day. Um, and what does that mean? I mean, what does that mean to the average person? To me, every day is turtle day because I just, I'm surrounded by them and I'm a super huge dork, so I'm really into turtles. Uh, but for the average person that maybe doesn't know a whole lot about turtles and doesn't kind of revolve their life around them, uh, it's a good time to appreciate uh, all the species that we have, all the species we still have left. Um, there's so many that are endangered and threatened uh, and just kind of rapidly losing ground throughout where they live. Uh, so tomorrow's a good day to kind of look at all the posts. Uh, you'll see a lot of social media posts by Turtle Conservancy, Turtle Survival Alliance, a lot of these different groups. And they'll be posting a whole lot of good information, a lot of stuff that maybe you didn't know. I'm almost out of breath. And it's, it's a good time to really get to know uh, some species that maybe you're not familiar with and get to know programs to help save those species. So. Uh, I'll post some links down here to the Turtle Survival Alliance and the Turtle Conservancy. Uh, they both do a lot of good work uh, helping to save turtles, and that's always a good thing. So, anyway, I hope everybody watching this has a great World Turtle Day, and uh, I hope that it helps kind of 
give you a bit of more, a bit of more, a bit more of an appreciation uh, for our shelled friends who are uh, unfortunately having a bit of a hard time these days. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Please share this video with all your friends and family and spread the good word about turtles, man. Take care. Thought I was gonna hit the lens. <laughs>